All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Kyle Escamilla, and I am the training coordinator for Aviva Select California. Thank you for attending our Learn in 30 webinar today focused on process view for Aviva, alarm management, and data analytics. After the webinar this morning, we will be doing a short Q&A. Please type any questions or comments into the Q&A box, the chat box, or you can email us at webinar at california.avivaselect.com. Now I'd like to introduce your presenter for today's webinar, James Fox. James is a product manager for Process View. Good morning, James. Hi, good morning, Kyle, and thank you. Um, so I'd just like to say thank you to Aviva Select California for hosting this webinar. And I'd just like to thank all of the uh, attendees that are joining us on this webinar. We value your time, so thank you very much for that. Um, so without further ado, we'll begin the webinar. So my name is James Fox. I'm the product manager for the Process View Alarm Management Suite of Products from Max Solutions. I've been involved in the alarm management arena for well over 20 years. And throughout that time, I've held both technical and commercial roles, which puts me in a good place for, as the product manager for the Process View Alarm Management software. So I'd just like to quickly cover the agenda. So the webinar is going to take around um, 30 minutes. As Kyle said, there'll be some time at the end for a short Q&A session. Um, and so during this webinar, we're going to have a quick look at alarm management in the digital age and how it's changing from the traditional view of alarm management. We'll have a quick look at um, process view, who we are. We will cover um, alarm management what's it all about. I'll introduce you to the process view alarm management suite of software. And then shortly after that, we'll have a quick video that demonstrates some of the features and functionality that you'll find across the process view suite of products. And then we'll have a quick look at a case study of process view and alarm management, how it's been applied. And we will then cover process view for Aviva and a quick look at some of the future developments that we've got on the roadmap for process view. Um, so with the agenda covered, I'll dive into the bulk of the webinar. So the first thing we're gonna cover is alarm management in the digital age. So here at process view, we are reframing the way people think about alarm management. Now, traditionally, alarm management has been associated as a cost center for compliancy and has mainly been used by the heavy industries such as oil and gas and uh, petrochemical refineries. Um, but what we're seeing is a growing number of our forward thinking customers who are challenging the status quo of alarm management. Now, as well as using the alarm data for compliance reasons, because we have to acknowledge that alarm management is always going to have its roots in traditional health and safety. And that's absolutely fine and necessary. But we're seeing a growing number of our forward thinking customers challenge the status quo of alarm management. So as well as use it for compliance, they're also leveraging it to help drive productivity and efficiency as part of digitalization strategies. So a little bit about us, who are ProcessView. So ProcessView is the culmination of over 30 years of experience and expertise in managing alarms. Um, ProcessView is trusted by leading industrial organizations the world over because of its rich functionality, its ease of use, and because of the knowledge, support, and passion of the ProcessView team. So here at ProcessView, we understand and acknowledge that alarm systems are not necessarily used every day. They're there when you need them, which means you can go for a period of time without using the alarm management system. 
So the alarm management software has to be easy to use, especially after periods of inactivity, so that you're able to use it and leverage it for the benefits when you need it. Now, every application and every installation and custom development of process view all adds to our story and all forms part of our experience that we've gathered over the years. Alarm management is what we do. So we have to be, we have to be good at it. So moving on, what is alarm management? So I've taken an excerpt from Wikipedia, which was probably written by a, a four-year-old somewhere on the internet. Um, but I have to give credit to that four-year-old because if we were to write an article in Wikipedia about alarm management, it would probably look pretty similar to what we've got in Wikipedia already. So good job to the four-year-old. Um, there's a wall of text here about alarm management. So rather than read this wall of text, I'm just going to pick out a few items of interest and summarize the article. So um, what is alarm management? So alarm management is a series of policies and procedures and systems that are designed to improve the alarm systems for the operator. They are the customer of alarm management. Um, one of the biggest issues that alarm management has to tackle are alarm floods. Now, when a piece of equipment fails, it's generally not one piece of equipment or one item or one alarm that we receive in isolation. Because the process is made up of lots of complex pieces of machinery that all interacts together, when something goes wrong, it tends to have a ripple effect on the rest of the process. So an example of that would be a water pump. So let's say we have a water pump that fails. We might get an alarm to say the water pump's failed. Then if the water pump is feeding water to another part of the process, we're perhaps going to detect some low flows as that water pump's tripped and is no longer feeding that water further up the process. Now, if that piece of um, if that water pump is providing cooling water to a piece of equipment, a critical piece of equipment that has to be kept cool and maintained, well, it won't be long before that starts to overheat and we get other problems. So typically when alarms occur, we end up with what we would call a, an alarm shower and an alarm flood. And why is this a problem for operators? Well, an alarm flood is a problem for operators because an operator's got a certain amount of cognitive capacity to handle alarms, much the same way as a flood drain is designed to cope with a certain amount of water. And if there's too much water for the drain to handle, it starts to back up and it starts to collect to standing water. Compare that to alarm management. If we get too many alarms for the operator, well, they start to miss the alarms. There's too many alarms for them to take the appropriate actions. And then we start entering uh, shall we call it troubled water. Um, to give you an example, it's estimated that poor alarm management costs industry around $20 billion a year in lost production and incidents that could have been avoided with good alarm management practices. Now, the last point to mention on this article is that really alarm management is not just a single destination, it's a journey. If you perform alarm management once and you stop, you can guarantee that within a year, two years, you're going to be back in that same position that you started with, with too many alarms or they don't supply the correct information. Alarm management is a continuous improvement process that should be continuously performed and managed. So human factors play a large part in alarm management. Um, the operator, the alarms are designed to alert the operator to the fact that there's been um, an abnormal situation is about to occur or an incident or a piece of equipment is operating outside of its normal uh, operating envelope or window. So an alarm should perform several actions, it should alert the operator to the problem. It should tell him what the problem is. It should tell him where the problem is. And then of course, the operator has to take several steps to hopefully remedy that situation. 
Now, the um, alarm management industry standards and guidelines, they stipulate that you should have, in a perfect world, you'd have one alarm per 10 minutes. Now, 10 minutes sounds like a long time. Um, try watching 10 minutes on your watch or watching paint dry, then it becomes a very long time. But when you think about what that operator's got to do within that 10 minutes when that alarm comes in, like I say, he's got to see the alarm, understand it, know where it is, navigate to it through the HMI. He's got to take corrective action and then he's got to monitor the process to make sure that the action he's taken has had the desired effect and the abnormal situation has been averted. Then, of course, what happens if another alarm comes in? Is it of the same priority? Which alarm should he focus on? Should he focus on the new alarm? And with all these activities going off, that 10 minutes can soon disappear. So when you start to get an alarm flood, you end up with a lot of stressed operators um, and a lot of anxiety. So in today's marketplaces, we often see our customers with a number of common alarm management challenges and issues. And, and they range from um, your typical high alarm loads where the operators will end up accepting alarms without proper review because there's too many. They don't have the time to dedicate to each individual alarm because they're having to serve so many of them. This can lead to poor decision making in response to those alarms, again, because of that time pressure. There might be two um, or three alarms of a similar priority that come in and he's then got to try and decide which alarm he should be taking action against. In worst cases, you'll find that critical alarms can be missed altogether because the, the alarms are just coming through too quickly. It was at a, a customer's site only a few weeks ago um, and they admitted to having that problem several times over the last six months. So it's very much a real and live issue for a number of our customers. Alarm floods, I've already spoken about the interconnectivity of the planet and the process, and that when one alarm occurs, it's never on its own. There's normally a whole raft of alarms, part of a shower or a flood that will come in and exacerbate the alarm situation. Then we've got alarm challenges that center around nuisance alarms. And I think nuisance alarms are, are, are particularly um, dangerous for the operator. We've got nuisance alarms that can be regularly defeated or not acknowledged. And I'm talking about your most frequent alarms, your chattering, um, your fleeting alarms, etc. So for an, an an analogy of that would be um, if you live in, a, in, a, in an estate and you may have a very old and dear lady who lives in one of the neighboring houses. And let's say that 11 o'clock in the morning, her burglar alarm goes off. Now, the first time you hear that alarm, you're probably going to be a little bit concerned about your neighbor. You may have a look out your window. You may, depending on um, sort of person you are within the community you may even go around and see if they're okay and if they need help and so the alarm has effectively it's done its job it's made you aware that there's a problem and that you need to take action against it now if that burglar alarm then continues to go off every hour for the next three to four weeks fast forward four weeks and that alarm goes off again suddenly your attitude towards that alarm has changed dramatically Instantly, you'll probably say, ah, it's that old lady's alarm again. It's always going off. And you may not even bother to have a look and check on that lady this time. And of course, it's those times where the operators led it almost into a false sense of security that he stops checking the alarm system because these alarms are always going off, that it masks an important alarm. So if a critical alarm should occur at the same time as one of these nuisance alarms and the operators got... Um, a reduced sense of faith, shall we say, in the alarm system, then there's a very real potential for that alarm to be missed, which could lead to an incident, loss of production, loss of quality, etc. So these alarm challenges often lead into several overall consequences. You can think of the alarm system as becoming ineffective. It's no longer doing its job. It's not really alerting the operators to the critical alarms and it becomes somewhat ignored. Because the alarm system is not doing its job and these alarms are rife and we're responding to alarms, we end up in a situation where we have increased downtime and reduced profitability because where the plant is down more often than it should be.
We've then got operators who are operating the plant and the process with a reduced situational awareness. They can't see the wood for the trees. There's too many alarms to be able to dedicate the time to take the correct response, monitor that response to make sure that it's had the desired effect. And also leading back to the human factors aspect is you end up with the operators who are getting increasingly stressed and fatigued. It's no fun at all to be sat in a control room when you've got constant enunciation of alarms, hour in, hour out, day in, day out. It's not a nice place to work. So over the last 30 years, we've seen numerous incidents where Poor alarm management has been cited as a contributing factor to the incident. And these incidents have had many impacts, impacts on employees' health and safety, on reputation of the company themselves, to damage to the environment, etc. And because there were so many incidents, the regulatory bodies started to develop um, standards and guidelines that would help inform and educate industry as to what a good alarm management system should look like. How do we purchase one? How do we configure it? How do we set it up? How do we set the graphics up? How do we configure the alarms so that we can correctly contain the relevant information and alert the operator's attention to them? Um, so we've got several alarm management standards and guidelines ranging from the EMEA 191 guidelines. They came first. Then we've got the ISA 18.2 standard. And of course, we've got the BSEN um, or the IEC 6682 standard. Now, the standards are all very complementary. They don't oppose and present different ideas. They give complementary um, information. And from an alarm management point of view, when it comes to looking at the metrics to be used as a guideline, they're very similar with only subtle changes. For example, the EMU191 has the EMU API so that you can see the performance of your plant versus upset and steady states. And ISA 18.2 focuses more on the um, alarm rates per hour. So th the standards are complementary, but they there will be slight differences within the metrics themselves. But the general idea is the same to help guide and inform industry about good alarm management and how to procure one. The ISA 18.2 goes one step further and introduces the, um, the alarm life cycle into the document. So alarm management in the digital age. So what we're talking about is a perception shift and we like to call it alarm management without limits. Um, so if we look back in history, we see traditional alarm management being associated with that cost center for compliance. And it would be typically used by the heavy industries, the oil and gas industries, the petrochemicals. Um, and fast forward to today in the digital era, and what we're seeing is we're seeing new emerging markets needing and requesting alarm management. And with this, they're bringing new use cases for alarm management. They're helping generate this perception shift that alarm management doesn't have to just be for compliance. We can leverage it to help identify productivity and efficiency opportunities, particularly as part of digitalization strategies. So, for example, um, we're dealing with a pharmaceutical company. And they are wanting to use alarms and alarm management to help them identify when um, batches go outside of the normal operating condition. So what they want to do is they want to benchmark the alarms against specific batches over a number of campaigns so that they can then create a standard alarm pattern for each batch. And what this will do is it will allow them to have a standard and a way of identifying when a batch deviates from those normal operating conditions. The minute those alarms change, the frequency of the alarms change, they want to be alerted to it so that they can take action within that batch. So rather than losing the batch and having to scratch it, or rather than letting the product quality suffer, they want to be alerted sooner using alarm management so that they can correct any defects and deviations from that gold, golden batch or the perfect recipe. Um, so that's one example 
of the perception shift. Another one would be within um, the heavy industries. So for example, um, an oil platform, emergency shutdown valves, they have to evidence and, and, and um, demonstrate that ESD valves have stroked. If they haven't stroked during a shutdown, they have to go through and test all of these ESD valves to make sure that they are fully operational. Now, with alarm management, because they're capturing all that information, they can take credit when that ESD valve strokes within normal operating conditions. And so they can go back and evidence that that valve has traveled within the last year. And what that means is that they can take credit for it which means ultimately they can have a reduced shutdown, less services, and so it saves them an incredible amount of money by being able to shorten that shutdown period. Another example of the perception shift would be to monitor particular alarms. Let's say we've got alarms that are associated with environmental breaches. We may be flaring into the atmosphere and we've got an amount that we're able to flare to the atmosphere. If we go beyond that limit, then we're going to get fined due to a regulatory breach of consent. So what companies want to do is monitor the alarms associated with the environmental breaches rather than wait for the environmental breach to happen. They want to use alarm management to notify them when they get close to that environmental breach so that they can take action against it and prevent the monetary fines. So rolling back, alarm management without limits, it's all about a perception shift. Yes, alarm management's used for health and safety compliance. It will always be used for compliance, but there is literally no limit to the amount of ways that we can leverage alarm and event data to help drive productivity and efficiency within our processes. So how can we evidence that? So if we were to look back five years ago, the typical companies that would, would be purchasing uh, alarm management software would be your heavy industries. We're talking oil and gas, petrochemical um, refineries, etc. But today we have lots of conversations with pharmaceutical companies, um, with water and wastewater companies, utilities. So there's new emerging markets for alarm management. So the game is definitely changing. People who are buying alarm management software, again, five or six years ago, we would be talking to um, control and instrumentation engineers, and they would be looking to purchase alarm management for isolated um, areas to help with compliance and reducing the number of alarms. Now we're having conversations with digital transformation officers, maintenance managers, as the demand for alarm management is being requested throughout the business, no longer just at the control level, it's wanted and requested all throughout the business. Alarm event data is effectively an indicator to the health of the process. For example, um, being able to monitor the environmental breaches of consent, there's so much information that we've got available to us in the alarm management systems that we can get a really good understanding of the health of the process, which will enable us to act faster when things do go wrong and help us reduce mean time to repair. There's very many benefits. And so on that note, I'd like to introduce you to the Process View um, Alarm Management Suite of Software. So Process View is a suite of products built around the life cycle of alarm management. And Process View provides key personnel with clear, relevant and prioritized alarm and event information for operations, compliance and business optimization. And it's product philosophy is that it has to be easy to use. It's vendor neutral so that we can collect alarms and events from multiple different systems to provide a unified and holistic view of our alarms and events. And with a simple licensing model, it allows you to start small and then scale up as your requirements grow over time. Our customers are across a range of industries from energy and utilities, oil and gas, chemicals uh, and pharmaceuticals, like I've already spoken about. And we employ a partnership approach where we employ trusted retailers around the globe to help sell process view. So 
Process View. It's a suite of products built around the um, alarm management lifecycle. There are three products in the suite. The first product is what we call Process View Sequence, and it's an alarm historian. It allows us to collect alarms and events from multiple disparate systems, normalize that data into a standard format, and write it into an industry standard SQL database. From there, we have a web browser that allows us to consume that uh, alarm and event information and assist operators with post-trip analysis due to that real-time view and filtering aspects of alarm and events. It also allows us to extrapolate the alarm and event data from the DCS and the SCADA systems. So you can be performing alarm analysis and event monitoring from your office without having to go into the control room and disturb the operators from doing their job. The next product is the process view analyzer, which encompasses the sequence of events, the alarm historian, and it builds on it by adding real-time dashboards for at a glance information and a series of comprehensive reports that allow us to identify nuisance alarms such as chattering alarms, fleeting alarms, we can look at stale alarms, we can look at time in alarm analysis, um, so it, time and alarm durations, and we're also able to benchmark alarm systems to the alarm management standards and guidelines such as the ISA 18.2, the uh, API 1167, the IEC 62682, and of course the EMEA 191 guidelines. And then we've got the third product, which is our master alarm database. So Process View Guardian is a master alarm database. It provides a central repository for all of your authorized alarm settings. It has a workflow built into it, which ensures any alarm setting change has to be approved before it can be deployed. So the idea is you reduce the number of unauthorized changes to the alarm settings that the operators are making. There's also um, comparison capability within Guardian so that you can identify any alarm setting that has been changed without going through the proper management of change procedures. There's also um, productivity tools built into Guardian for efficient alarm rationalization and documentation activities. It includes things like copy one alarm to many and batch editing of your alarm settings. So I've got a little video that demonstrates a little bit of the functionality from both the Process View Analyzer and the Process View Guardian software. So we're going to look at the um, Process View Analyzer first of all. And it's a video that will demonstrate how easy it is to set up a customizable real-time dashboard. So as I go in to create a new dashboard, I go into the designer mode and select new dashboard from the menu. I give the dashboard a name, select a data source for my dashboard, and then I can start adding widgets and components to my dashboard. I'm adding a picture so that I can see what area these alarms are relating to. I'm going to drop on some gauges so I can look at the alarm count. I'm going to be able to look at the acknowledged count within a time frame. And I'm also going to look at the volume and the alarm rates. And I might also drop on the priority alarm distribution. And so once I've added the components, it's then just a case of organizing them into a format that I'm happy with. And once I'm happy with it, I can then save the dashboard and implement it into runtime. When you create a dashboard, it gets created in a private space. Um, and that's then your own personal dashboard. But you can then, if you want to, you can publish it to a public group that anyone can use. And so as you can see, as I use the date time filter, I can slide my dashboard around and it will update accordingly. So it runs both in real time and it looks at historic. So in this next video, we're going to look at the process view guardian and how we can perform a batch edit on multiple tags. So this scenario will be used if you've got, say, 100 pumps that you need to document and rationalize. You can either go through and document and rationalize 100 pumps, one at a time, or you could use guardian to perform a batch edit. We'd add the tags to a project, select them all from the project, and then go into the batch edit 
option. From there, we'll get a list of the tags that we've selected for batch edit and a list of all of the fields that are common across all of the selected tags. We can then go in and change the value. And as we change this value, it's going to be applied to all of the tags within the project that I've selected for the batch edit. And of course, it's a full audit trail, so I can add comments and the reasons why I've changed what I've changed. Um, and if we go back into the project, once the batch um, edit has been performed and we look at the tag, we can see on the right hand side, we can see the deployed value, which is the live settings. And on the left on the blue column, we can see the review value. And so we can see that under the deployed value, the um, unit drop down was unit one. And as part of the batch edit, I've set it to unit three. And so you could quite easily batch edit 100, 200 um, pumps, pressure sensors in one go using Guardian. So moving on from the real-time dashboards, um, I'd like to talk a, a little bit about a case study. Um, so the company um, is Perenco. They are a UK-based company, and they have one of the largest infrastructures of pipeline around the UK on the East Coast. Now, they had um, several alarm management challenges, one of which was the volume of alarms being enunciated to the operators. So they chose to acquire process view analyzer to help them identify and understand the size and scale of their alarm management issues. Then once they had an understanding of the problem, they then set about on a rectification plan. So they start an alarm management project to improve the situation. So they first tackled the nuisance alarms, thanks to process view identifying nuisance alarms, chattering alarms, fleeting alarms, etc. They were able to deal with them on a weekly, monthly basis to reduce the overall number of alarms. That's the old alarm management Pareto that says 80% of your alarms are caused by 20% of your misconfigured alarms. So there's always quick wins that can be had. Um, and so that's what they tackled first with the quick wins. Once they tackled the quick wins and reduced the alarm rates to a certain level, they then acquired the process view guardian so that they could then perform a deeper rationalization. So they were able to reprioritize um, thousands of their alarms in a third of the time that it would have taken with traditional measures. And not only that, they were also able to create an alarm response manual. As you go through and rationalize and document the alarms, you would add the supporting information as per the IS 18.2 um, standards, where you're adding things like the cause of the alarm, the consequence of missing, and importantly, the, the operator actions that they should take in response to the alarms. As we know, the common alarms can be easily dealt with because the operators see them on a regular basis. It tends to be the infrequent alarms that you'll get one every six months or once a year that will really trip up the operators. So providing them with an alarm response manual enabled them to operate the plant and process in a more confident manner. So they reduced their alarm loads, reduced the amount of unplanned downtime they're experiencing, and we're also able to benefit their operators with confidence to them having a reference to the alarm and the operator actions that should be taken in response to them. So now on that note, I'd like to introduce you to our latest version of Process View, which we call Process View for Aviva. So we've taken all of the experience and expertise that we've learned with alarms and alarm management over the last 10 years, and we've poured it into Process View for Aviva. We've taken out all of the complex configuration aspects. We've introduced a series of wizards that literally allow you to get up and running and installed within a matter of minutes and installing the software with very little um, configuration and engineering. So you can be up and running in no time. And so now with Process View for Aviva, we can collect all of the alarms and events from the different um, areas and applications within the Aviva ecosystem. We have a series of collectors that allow us to communicate with Aviva's system platform, Aviva's InTouch HMI, Aviva's Plant SCADA, and we also have a suite of connectivity drivers for third parties so that we can collect alarms and events from multiple disparate systems using the collectors. We then use the archiver to normalize and standardize that alarm and event data before writing it into the database. 
From there, we have the process view analyzer acting as a data warehouse, which is counting and monitoring the alarms, things like counting up the most frequent alarms, identifying the chattering, uh, identifying the fleeting and providing an alarm analysis. It's looking at the stale alarms, the durations, the floods, et cetera. And then we expose all of that information through the web client, through the front end. So going forward, what we're hoping to do is we're hoping to connect and bring into process view Aviva's Pi historian. So not only will you have rich alarm and event history, but the idea is you'll also be able to correlate that alarm and event history with your process data. The more insight you have into what's happening on the process, the more informed and the more accurately you'll be able to act in response to the alarms and indeed take preventive actions against them. So it's all about providing more insight and usability for the operators to help them manage the process. Um, alarm Advisor was uh, an alarm, an interactive alarm management application that was sold by Wonderware and there's plenty of um, clients out there with, with aging Alarm Advisor systems, which is in fact now end of life. And so Process View is able to help protect those customers with investments in Alarm Advisor. Process View is an excellent replacement tool for Alarm, and Advi uh, Alarm Advisor. It replaces Alarm Advisor's old functionality, but also builds on it and introduces new features and functionality that you can make use of. We have things like stale alarm analysis, flood alarm analysis, operator response time. We have dedicated KPI summary reports. We provide holistic real-time views to alarm and events and help with post-trip incident investigations, et cetera. And that brings us to a close. Um, so thank you very much for your time and I'll hand us back to Kyle. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, James. Uh, we, will, we'll now, or we are now opening the floor to any questions you guys may have. And we actually have a couple that have come in already, so I suppose we can jump right in. Um, all right, so James, someone asked, are there more recent books or recommended websites to give more information and references on alarm management? They mentioned that they've uh, read Bill Holyfield's Alarm Management Handbook already. Yep, okay. So there's a number of um, sources that you can um, visit and it's probably a conversation for offline and afterwards, I'm sure um, we'll be able to provide them with more references that they can look towards for, to get more information about alarm management. So good question, thank you. Awesome. Uh, we got another question asking, are there any standards for alarm management, but for life sciences? Um, that's a good question. I think generally speaking, most people adopt the standards and then will tweak them slightly and make them their own. We see a number of pharmaceutical companies that use the uh, ISA 18.2 standards and adopt them within their own companies, but of course add their own um, takes to that with some slight modifications so that it's suited um, to their industry. Um, so that's a, a, a good question. Again, something else that we can follow up on after the, after the webinar, I think. Okay. Um, and then we got another question that asked, uh, how can we get access to the software to demo it? Um, that's a very good question. We've got a number of resellers. So again, it's a good question. We'll, we can take this offline afterwards, but we have a, a, a number of resellers around the globe. And so it would be dependent upon your area. All right. And then uh, got another question here. Will it only connect to other applications within the Aviva system or can it connect to other systems? Uh, no, it can connect to um, many disparate systems. We've um, aligned ourselves with Aviva, so we've got connectivity drivers that will allow us to connect to the Historian, to the uh, Wonderware HMI, the WWALMDB, but there's also a suite of connectivity drivers, uh, such as OPC alarms and events, Ethernet listen servers, uh, SQL database connectivity, uh, good old fashioned serial connectivity. So we have a suite of drivers that let us connect to many, many different systems. 
Awesome, thank you. Um, and then we got another question here. Does it have an API? We do not have an API at the moment, but we do have plans and API uh, interface is on the roadmap for both Process View Analyzer and Process View Guardian. So the idea is, is that we'll make the alarm response information available through API calls. We're already able to um, export the alarm response manual to a SQL table so that with a bit of uh, engineering, it can be presented within um, the HMIs. Um, but we want to expand on that further through um, full API support. So we, we will allow API uh, communication between Guardian and Analyzer and third party systems in the near future. Awesome. Um, all right, we got another one here. Is there a list of third party connection or connectors? We do have a list of systems that we've connected to and how we connect to them. So again, after the webinar, I can arrange for that information to be sent out to you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, all right, then we have one last one here. Uh, is there a specific KPI report or alarm that allows you to benchmark to the ISA 2.2 alarm standard? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, we can um, report to the uh, ISA 18.2 standard. We have a summary KPI report that contains 99% of the metrics that you'll find in the standard, uh, and that can all be produced from a single report, which of course can be automated, and then it can be sent via email on a schedule, which can be sent out on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Awesome. Oh, one more here that that just came in. Um... Um, says recommend this would run on a separate dedicated server, separate from SCADA systems. Yes, um, I would. I would. Yeah, I would recommend that it's installed on a on a on a separate server. It can be uh, installed in a distributed architecture. We do have um, multiple components that can be installed at different levels within the uh, within the business down at the control level. Um, so it's a, yeah, you, you can, you can make use of a distributed architecture or you can install it all on a single machine, but we would recommend that you, you install it on a dedicated system. Perfect. I think that is all of our questions. Thank you, James. And thank you everyone who attended. If anyone would like to review any portion of this webinar, a recording will be available on YouTube and our website, uh, california.avivaselect.com. Uh, once available, you will receive a copy of it via email. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for attending, and have a great day. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.